how arrogant he is, how it's just so smug and self-satisfied. And he that's because only a, a complete unalloyed narcissist like Justin Trudeau, who lives in his own tiny universe with his own tiny mind, could possibly be oblivious to the catastrophe that surrounds him. And the fact his days are limited. I don't mean he's 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 got terminal cancer or something. I mean, his political days are limited. He hasn't got much longer in office, but he sure thinks he does. Thank you very right. much. Thank you very much. Yeah, Number two. Yeah. Just, just love himself. Hello. Loves himself. Uh, the question is, over the last 10 years, you've added over a trillion dollars in debt to our national economy. That comes along with a price tag of approximately $32.3 billion in debt servicing costs per year which if we divided that money between every municipality in Canada, every single municipality, small and large, would have an additional $9 million. And since we all know that the budget will not balance itself, when are you gonna balance the budget? Ah. Excellent. Excellent. And of course, that reference to the budget does not balance himself is a definite <laughs> dig at Trudeau saying that don't worry about budget deficits, they balance themselves. Budgets balance themselves. I'm not going to worry about that. He hasn't worried about it for nine years. And this is why the government spends twice as much as it takes in. That is a fact. Those are the economic facts. This is a country run by a government that just prints money and spends it like water and doesn't think about the ramifications, doesn't worry about the consequences, doesn't even think there's anything abnormal about spending twice as much as you take in. And it's last ditch attempt to somehow recoup some of these fiscal losses to avoid going off the fiscal cliff is to have these capital gains tax increase from 50 to 66 percent. And all that's doing is penalizing and impoverishing largely older people who have their nest egg and properties that they're hoping to be able to sell without tremendous tax cost. And and so Trudeau is, is, is once again damaging the economy by trying to recoup the losses. But he's too arrogant and acts just too, too much of a lightweight to think about that. Well, listen, I, I really appreciate the question because it gives me an opportunity to sort of highlight some of the things about how the Canadian economy is doing. Um, there are three, the three largest uh, AAA rated economies in the world are the United States, Germany, and Canada. On the carbon price, before he gets into your carbon price and he gets heckled for this, this is a lie. So he's been saying up to this is the first time I've heard him say Canada lags behind the US and Germany. Every day in question period, whether he's up talking about it or whether it's Christy Freeland, the finance minister slash deputy prime minister, he or she is suggesting Canada's number one. Canada's number one is in, in this credit rating. And we're number seven. We're last. We're dead last. This is completely fabricated. This so-called fact from Justin Trudeau is completely made up. It's a lie. And listen to how he goes on once again, and he's going to say it twice. He's going to say it twice, that eight out of 10 Canadians get back more from the carbon tax rebate than they're put in. It actually puts more money in the pockets of eight out of 10 Canadian families. That's a parliamentary budget officer who says that. It's absolutely true. Ha <laughs> ha. On the carbon price, it actually puts more money in the pockets of 8 out of 10 Canadian families. That's a parliamentary budge officer who says that. It's absolutely true. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he laughs at the heckling because he really thinks. And look at him. Look over at his, at his moderator there saying, did I do good? Did I do good? Aren't you proud of me? I'm just sticking my nose in these people's eyes. I'm just thumbing my nose at them. I'm just, and I'm telling them, I don't, I don't need to give you any real answers. I don't need to tell you the truth. He also makes the astounding claim. I'm not going to go through all of Trudeau's lies and stupid claims that he makes at this meeting during this speech. But he also claims 
that more people are coming to Canada to, to invest than any other country in the G7. Lies. People are leaving Canada in droves. Capital is leaving Canada in huge amounts. People are not investing in Canada because they see it as a decaying economy that is so fragile that it's on the brink of the fiscal cliff. It's on the brink of catastrophe because it has so much debt and it is destroying its natural resources industry for the sake of green ideology. So nobody thinks Canada has got what it takes to invest. Let's listen to some more of this maniac. Thank you, Prime Minister. Microphone number one. Good afternoon, Karina Williams, Reeve, Northern Sunrise County. Prime Minister, I would like to know if you have been in person to the North Peace region of Alberta to actually see our oil and gas industry. If so, where and when? Because your misinformation continues, which I am confident would not be the case if you experience the true clean industry. Trudeau scratches his head. Me, mis, mis, misinformation? Me? But that's everybody else. Those are my political opponents with the misinformation. I'm not, I'm not delivering any misinformation. He's completely unaware of anything, he says, being completely factually untrue. for yourself and that way we would not need the carbon tax thank you all right prime minister um i i've i've visited fort mcmurray and the oil sands many times over the years but i haven't been to that particular region you're absolutely right um but i do know how important the energy industry is to this country uh, and I say energy writ large because uh, oil and gas has been a strong driver of the national economy for many, many decades. When Alberta does well, Canada does well. And that's just a basic truth. And that's something that we need to make sure we're continuing. The issue, though, excuse me, ma'am, the issue is that... In other words, don't interrupt me with the facts. The issue, though, is what, Trudeau? that you somehow think the world doesn't want Canada's energy? Once again, you're living in delusion and you're lying. The world is choosing to reduce its carbon emissions right now. Investment is flowing where carbon emissions are being reduced. Wrong. And we want to make sure that we continue to be part of providing energy solutions to the world. The oil sands were a technological innovation to get energy out of the oil sands. It took technology to figure it out. There's a technological problem we're having right now of reducing carbon emissions uh, around the world because uh, the world is warming at an alarming rate. We need... No, the world is not warming at an alarming rate. Once again, that's a complete fabrication. The world is not warming at an alarming rate at all. He's still sticking to global warming. He doesn't even realize the mantra is not global warming anymore. It's just climate change because global warming has been completely debunked. We need to respond to the challenges of climate change. And quite frankly, we need to make sure that the energy industry in Alberta is not just able to reduce its emissions, but able to innovate. So there are more good jobs for Albertan energy workers for decades to come, even as the world becomes less reliant on oil and gas. And we already discovered in a secret memo, internal memo in the Liberal government, that those good paying jobs that are going to be left after the oil industry is strangled by this government are going to be janitorial positions. That's it. There's not going to be any high paying jobs in oil rigs. There's no high paying jobs creating solar panels. They're all made in China. So this man is completely delusional. That is the situation we're facing right now. It's not me who's decided that uh, the, the, the world uh, is changing the way we consume energy. That's happening. And if Alberta and Canada are going to be part of that transformation and indeed benefit 
from continuing to provide energy to the world, we have to continue to invest in transforming and reducing our emissions while we continue to provide energy to the world. And the price on pollution, the carbon tax, is an important part of that. It has been designed so that eight out of 10 families get more money back every year from that price on pollution than it actually costs them. That's the carbon is not a pollution. Therefore, the carbon tax is a tax and not a price on pollution. That's a lie. Again, he, all he can do is stream lies. And it's doing nothing to arrest climate change, even if carbon is the primary cause of climate change. If Canada reduces its emissions to zero, it will have virtually no effect on the global footprint. I keep saying this, Canada produces less than 1.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions. So you tell me where the arithmetic is that if Canada reduces its greenhouse gas emissions to zero, how that's going to have any effect on the global carbon footprint. Trudeau can't do that because he can't even add. Thank you for watching this episode of Stand on Guard and being a part of the Creighton's Right channel. If you've watched this episode to this point, you've watched it all. And that's really important for a small station like this. We always say subscribe, hit the bell, be a part of the Creighton resistance. Resolve to resist. That's what we're doing. And if you become a subscriber, if you're a supporter of this station or a member through Substack, through YouTube, and now you can be a local as well, that's so important to us because I couldn't do this without you. I made a decision to become an independent journalist about a year ago because I wanted to bring all of my experience in the military, in journalism, to you. I don't promise anything I can't deliver. I don't offer clickbait. I offer truth. The truth is out there. And it's my job to bring that truth to light and to you. Thanks for being a part of the Creighton's Right Resistance. And we'll see you again soon. So we are in a very precarious position in this country. We need a political change, but we also need to resolve to resist.